After the first four phases of polling, the focus shifts to the Gangetic Plains. So in the fifth phase of the Lok Sabha elections, 49 constituencies in eight states, that is Bihar, Jharkhand, Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Odisha, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal will go to the polls. I am Saurav Kumar and here is a list of top 10 constituencies and candidates to look out for in phase 5. Starting with Rai Bareilly, in a strategic move reflecting the seat's importance, Rahul Gandhi is now contesting from Rai Bareilly in the upcoming elections. This he is doing after losing Amethi in 2019. It also comes after his mother Sonia Gandhi took the Rajya Sabha route to get into the parliament. Rai Bareilly is the second seat for the Gandhi Sayan. He is also contesting from Wayanad in Kerala. Rai Bareilly has been Congress stronghold and a significant seat for Gandhi family for decades. It was first represented by Feroz Gandhi in 1952. The opposition candidate Dinesh Pratap Singh is a former Congress leader and influential local figure who joined the BJP in 2018. In the 2019 election, Singh ran against Sonia Gandhi and lost by a margin of nearly 1.6 lakh votes. However, he received 38% of the total votes, the highest among all the BJP candidates in the history of Rai Bareilly. The BJP is relying on Singh's strong grassroots connections, particularly at the village and block levels, to strengthen his campaign. Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi Wadra is steering the campaign for brother Rahul Gandhi. She is addressing multiple street corner meetings daily. She isn't missing a single opportunity to remind the voters about a family's century-old ties with the constituency. Her campaign motto is Seva Ke Sao Saal or 100 years of public service. The BJP is dead serious about putting up a good fight against Rahul. This can be gauged from Union Home Minister's sharp call to local party workers that a win in Rai Bareilly will be equivalent to 400 seats. Now coming to number 2 is the constituency of Amethi. Here, key candidates are Smriti Irani and KL Sharma of the Congress. Amethi has traditionally been a bastion of Gandhi family, with Rahul Gandhi representing it until his shock defeat to Smriti Irani in 2019. Smriti Irani, the Union Women and Child Development Minister, is now contesting from here for the third time. In 2024 elections in Amethi, it brings a new dimension to the contest, with KL Sharma, a seasoned Congress strategist and a long-time aide of the Gandhi family, now stepping into the electoral fray. The BJP is leveraging the narrative of development under Modi government and Yogi government and emphasizing infrastructure improvements like roads. It is also criticizing Rahul Gandhi for abandoning the constituency after his defeat. Smriti Irani is trying to highlight that she has embedded herself in the constituency through symbolic gestures like purchasing a house in Amethi and facilitating the establishment of a new Coca-Cola bottling plant. Congress candidate Kishori Lal Sharma has been associated with the Congress party for over four decades. He first entered the political scene in Amethi in 1983 alongside Rajiv Gandhi. Priyanka Gandhi Vaza has taken a prominent role in revitalizing Congress's campaign in Amethi. She is conducting numerous street corner meetings and emphasizing the Gandhi family's long standing connection to the constituency. Apart from these two seats, 12 more constituencies are going to polls in Uttar Pradesh in phase 5. These are Mohanlal Ganj, Lucknow, Jalon. Jhansi, Hamirpur, Banda, Fatehpur, Kashambi, Barabanki, Faizabad, Kaisarganj, and Gonda. In 2019, the BJP won 13 of the 14 seats in this phase, while the Congress won the Raibarili seat. Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh is seeking a third term from Lucknow. With solid backing from his party's organization, Rajnath Singh is a strong position for re election. Another high profile seat that will be contested is Kaisarganj. The current MP Bridge Bhushan Saran Singh, who is also the former president of Wrestling Federation of India or WFI, has been denied a ticket. His son Karan Bhushan Singh is now running for the seat. In Fatehpur, Union Minister and sitting BJP MP Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti is also seeking her third term. She is being challenged by former SP State Chief Naresh Uttam Patel. The Gonda Lok Sabha seat is witnessing direct contest between Kirti Vardhan Singh, the sitting BJP MP, and Shreya Verma of SP. Shreya is the granddaughter of former Union Minister Beni Prasad Verma and is making her political debut in these elections. From UP, we come to Bihar, here five seats are going to polls. The key constituency is Hajipur. The seat has a deep political significance, having been represented nine times by late Ram Vilas Paswan. His son, Chirak Paswan, a two-time MP from Jamui, is now vying for his third term. Chirak Paswan is banking on his father's legacy to secure victory. His candidature follows intense internal party dynamics that saw him overcoming challenges from his uncle. 
Pashupati Kumar Paras, the current MP from Hajipur. In this election, Chirag aims to consolidate his position as his father's political heir. In contrast, Shiv Chandra Ram's campaign is tapping into broad coalition of RJD's traditional supporters, aiming to shift the narrative towards social justice and inclusion. The outcome in Hajipur will reflect on Chirag Paswan's ability to emerge from his father's shadow and test the resilience of RJD's coalition politics in a constituency deeply influenced by caste dynamics. Number 4 is Saran. With Bihar power couple and former CM Lalu Prasad Yadav and Rabi Devi taking a step back, the limelight this election season is state has shifted to their daughter Rohini Acharya, the RJD candidate for Saran. Saran's seat is also known as Lalu's Karmu Bhumi. He was first elected from here at the age of 29 in 1977. Rohini is pitted against senior BJP leader Raji Pratap Rudi. Rudi, the sitting MP of Saran and three times parliamentarian, has defeated Lalu Prasad Yadav's wife, Rabri Devi, in 2040, and Lalu Yadav Samdhi, Chandrika Rai, in 2019. Rudi has reportedly asserted that his primary opponent is Lalu Prasad Yadav, with Rohini Acharya merely serving as a mask since Lalu Yadav cannot contest the election. Number 5 is Baramula, where Omar Abdullah of NC is fighting against Sajjad Lone of the PC. Lone, who has an advantage of the hometown in Baramula constituency, calls Abdullah a dynast who is a tourist and alien to the people in North Kashmir. Lone also has the support of the Apni party in this constituency. On the other hand, Abdullah has accused PC of being a B team or BJP and repeatedly said that he was fighting BJP in Baramula. Engineer Rashid, who has got over 1 lakh votes in last Lok Sabha election, is also fighting this election from Tiharje. In number 6, Ladakh covering an expansive area of 1,73,000 266 square kilometers faces its first major electoral contest as union territory in upcoming polls. Initially a direct fight between BJP and Congress, the race now includes an independent Haji Hanif Jha, backed by Kargil Democratic Alliance or KDA, transforming it into a three-way battle. The BJP had nominated Tashi Galson, the chief executive councillor of the Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council to replace former MP Jamyang Sering Namgyal. In alliance with National Conference under India Blog, the Congress has fielded Sering Namgyal, leader of the opposition in LAHTC. KDA's inclusion of Jan adds complexity to the contest, especially given Ladakh's recent push for greater constitutional safeguards and statehood underscored by widespread local agitation and strikes. Coming to Maharashtra on May 20, the remaining 13 seats, including six parliamentary constituencies in Mumbai, will be contested. One of the key contests to watch is in Mumbai North Central. A Congress MLA, Varsha Gaikwad, the party's Mumbai unit president, will face off against BJP candidate, noted lawyer Ujwal Nigam. Ujwal Nigam is a senior public prosecutor who has been involved in several high-profile cases, including the 2611 Mumbai attack case and the 1993 Mumbai serial bomb blast case. On the other hand, Varsha Gaikwad is a former cabinet minister and four-term legislator from Dharavi, Asia's largest slum. The constituency had diverse population, including Maratha-speaking people, Muslims and North Indians. Both candidates aim to secure support from these different demographic groups. The BJP is optimistic about gaining the support of Marathi-speaking voters and North and South Indians, while Gaikwad hopes to receive backing from Marathi-speaking voters, Muslims and other minorities with the support of Shiv Sena UBT. On number 8, Union Minister and BJP veteran Piyush Goel will take on Bhushan Patil of the Congress in Mumbai North. Mumbai North is a crucial constituency with a history of aligning its vote with the national election outcome. In 2004, Bollywood actor Govinda clinched the seat for Congress. This pattern continued with Congress Sanjay Nirupam winning in 2009. However, the scenario flipped in 2014 as BJP Gopal Shetty secured the seat amidst a surge of change. Here, Piyush Goel is leaving nothing to chance, though it appears to be going his way. A chartered accountant, the former BJP treasurer, has made his way to the parliament in the past through Rajya Sabha. Nurtured by erstwhile Union Railways Minister Ram Naik for five straight terms starting in the late 80s, the party is on a solid footing here, with four of six assembly segments represented by the BJP MLAs. There are pockets of support for Congress and Shiv Sena UBT especially among minorities and Marathis. Still a broad swath cutting across the migrant base of Uttar Bharatiya 
Gujaratis and South Indians are expected to endorse the poster boy of Modi regime. On number 9, we have Kalyan. The upcoming elections in Kalyan constituency of Maharashtra is crucial for Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde and his son Shrikant Shinde. Shrikant, who has previously won the seat in 2014 and 19, is aiming for a third consecutive victory with a target of over 5 lakh votes encapsulated in his campaign slogan, Is Bar 5 Lakh Par. Vaishali Darekar of the Shiv Sena UBT is challenging the Shindes in the constituency, which is stronghold of the RSS and the BJP. Darekar was previously a candidate from MNS in 2009 and is clearly the underdog here. The outcome in Kalyan will be crucial as it is a battleground of prestige and influence. Number 10, coming to West Bengal. Hogli, one of the 42 Lok Sabha constituency in West Bengal, known for its economic development and a significant hub for jute cultivation industry and trade, was historically under the control of CPIM. Hogli shifted its political allegiance following the Singur controversy, leading to Trinamool Congress victories in 2009 and 14 elections. In 2019 Lok Sabha elections, it saw a significant change when BJP's Lockett Chatterjee won the seat. This election cycle, Srinamool Congress has strategically nominated Rachna Banerjee, a well-known TV host of Didi No. 1 and a newcomer to the political scene to challenge BJP's incumbent Lockett Chatterjee and CPIM's Mandeep Ghosh. So these were the top 10 constituencies that are going to poll in Phase 5. In addition to these, three seats in Jharkhand and five seats in Urissa are also going to polls. Here is the list of candidates in these constituencies.